Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Siad channel. In the video here today, which is the first video of my relationship series here on YouTube, we're going to be talking about the co-abusive relationship. Let's get started. Now the co-abusive relationship is made up two individuals who both have a disorganized attachment. This type of relationship is particularly harmful and hurtful to the people in it. Because when you have a person who has a disorganized attachment, they require help, support. Sometimes it takes a team of people to help a person with disorganized attachment. Sometimes it takes a really skilled psychotherapist to help a person with disorganized attachment. So people with disorganized attachment have extreme examples of or, or extremely predictable and reliable abusive traumatic experiences that basically they could do nothing about and because they could do nothing about their mind is disorganized around chaos it's it's it, <clears throat> there was no way they could similar to the other attachments kind of find a way to be avoidant and at least then they'd be left alone or you know be pleasing and at least then they'd be left alone there was no real predictability the only thing that could be somewhat predicted is that pain and suffering is abound now in that sense what happens for the person with a disorganized attachment is they start having these chaotic ideas these fantasy ideas about what they can do to regulate themselves and what they can do to stay in a relationship with their partner. Now when you have two people who are thinking in this way, two people who have these fantasies, these chaotic ways of relating to another person, well over time what happens is as those fantasies, as they initially meet, there's fantasies. She's going to save me. He's going to save me. Or she's going to save me. She's going to save me. He's going to save me. He's going to save me. You know, not a gender thing, but you know, I'm just going to use he, she here just to, just to make it easy. So she's going to save me. He's going to save me. And in that idea, it's like, oh, okay, but you didn't. Now, as the person becomes more and more hurtful this person here becomes more and more hurtful and before you know it they're both trying to hurt each other to offset their own individual pain or hurt themselves to offset the pain in themselves or hurt themselves to offset the pain in the other so that might sound strange, but I'll give you an example. They have a fight, then one person goes and cuts themselves to reduce the pain and the suffering. The other one goes and uses drugs so they can knock themselves out so they don't end up hurting the person again that night. And I, that might sound to you like, oh, that's a foreign example or whatever. But if you've ever worked with this organized attachment, or if you yourself have one, or if you have a friend who has one, you know, it, it goes like that. No one, no one wants to. No one here is intentionally want. These are not bad people. These are not people who go around, you know, we're not looking at uh, evil people or, or bad people in any way. These are people who are, who are hurt and have no other way of dealing with those pains. So what might be a literal argument between a, a, a two securely attached individuals, it might be like, hey, I didn't like it when you said that. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. That can't happen in the co-abusive relationship because if one person is hurt, the other one must get more hurt. And this person who's hurt must get more hurt. So they're never really effectively working towards solutions. They're always working towards being more hurt in an endlessly co-abusive cycle of pain, suffering, abuse, further trauma, further uh, deepening of whatever um, relationship patterns they experienced as a child, the co-abusive relationship just deepens those patterns. So if you know somebody who's in a pattern like that, if someone is in a co-abusive relationship, themselves disorganized with someone who's disorganized, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to. No amount of relationship counseling is going to do anything about that. The best case scenario that relationship counseling has then is that it helps people, these two individuals, realize that they both need therapy. 
and that they're better off without each other. Why? Because in the scenario of the co-abusive relationship, when one person feels better, healthier, more well, the other one reacts more poorly. Now, when this person is doing more well, the other one reacts more poorly. So, in that sense, it, unless they are working upwards together in a perfect directional tandem, it's not going to work. And that perfection, we know, is not real. There is no such thing as perfection. It's a, it's a human-made uh, uh, error concept. So it's not going to work because of that. So what can you do if you're in a relationship like that is to take these facts and start working your way out of a relationship like that. Work yourself in towards healing first. And as you've healed more of your wounds, then you can work your way into a relationship, not with someone else who's disorganized, that doesn't work, with someone else who is slightly more well off. And in this sense, you need to kind of help your wellness meet someone else's wellness and have their wellness meet your wellness, because as long as it's your your hurt, your suffering, your traumatic um, patterns, your abusive, self-abusive and other abusive tendencies are going to meet someone else's, it's never going to work. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video about the co-abusive relationship. Let people know what I'm trying to do here with this series. Let your friends know. If you think people would benefit from watching this video, if you think this video might convince them to think twice about the relationship that they're in or maybe about seeking therapy, let them know about this video. I appreciate it and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.